Joey. Hi, Maggie. How are you? Good, good. So Alex is back. You can see him now. Oh, cool. Let's go. All right. Hi, everybody. Joey K. Uh, I'm in Nairobi, Kenya. And the biggest question I get on EVs, you know, I've been doing a lot of this EV awareness for over seven, eight years now. And everybody says, in Africa, who's going to give us support? Okay, I buy my EV, something goes wrong, what am I going to do? I have a Toyota, an ICE car, I know exactly there's a guy down the street who can fix my car. But with an EV, who's going to help me? He doesn't need specialized skills, high voltage technician, how does it work? So I've come to the right place today in Nairobi. I'm here at Ikweja for a little workshop. They got you if you're in Kenya. They, their job is just to service and maintain EVs. They do more than that. But today I'm just focusing on the EV ecosystem. Because that's the question, number one question I get every day. How do we fix EVs in Africa? So I'm here with Alex Monzo, he's general manager here. Hi Alex, how's it going? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm finally here. Alex, I've been with my friend for a long time, but I've actually never been to the new workshop. I've been to the old office, but today I made time and I'm here. So Alex, yeah, you know, you're in the, you're in the game. Yeah. People always ask you, how do I fix my car? Yeah. So take us through it. Um, so the first thing about when you want to bring an EV, obviously there are, there are way less maintenance. However, because everything is different than normal cars, there has to be a bit of specialized care towards this car. So we're talking about motors, batteries, and the ECU, the wiring, all these things. Uh, at Equator Mobility, we service all that in-house at this location, and we have the ability to support uh, Japanese cars, uh, UK Euro cars, American cars, and obviously Chinese cars as well, you can see behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are you guys working on right now? Uh, a lot actually. So uh, at the moment, we have four projects. So we have uh, KYT One from our colleagues at uh, Rydens. Uh, we also have a crashed Nissan Leaf, that we're doing full uh, underside rebuild. We'll rebuild also the battery, it has a few issues, so we can rebuild that locally. And at the back, we also have a car that actually came in from Rwanda for service that we're also rebuilding. It has issues with the charger. So these two actually, from the, the Wooly Mini EV and this two, has an uh, issue with the charger and the crashing system uh, together. Yeah, so you see the, the whole spectrum of cars. Uh, outside, they have uh, four by four for for safari trips also electric uh, that was built in Kenya but uh, equator mobility is servicing it so it's possible people are scared about that but now at least we have support and a lot of, a lot of people get cars off the grey market which are not from because in Africa most African countries actually 90% yeah. of the cars we get are used vehicles Correct. so people might not know where to start where to go yeah. but people like equator mobility can support you uh, linking you with the official partners in terms of getting spare parts so Alex, um, so now you have full service, you can support maintenance for EVs yeah. and we see several companies now getting into the game on the four-wheeler side, putting in trucks yeah. and buses. So where do you think the industry is going now in Kenya? Or, uh, where do you think it will be in the next two, three years? Um, I think um, for most people I see us opening up towards uh, a, lot of, a lot of people bringing in four-wheeler EVs mm -hmm. and then they'll still retain their fuel cars but they use their EVs for you know, your local running here to be going to the office, mm -hmm. going to schools and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's just because, and for Kenya, for people to bring in cars, they normally wait for like two, three years. Someone brings in a vehicle, they test it out and see how it is before more people bring in. So we are looking, we are about to see more and more people bringing in EVs locally. And also more buses. We've seen guys warming up towards a bicycle bus over a combustion machine mm -hmm. bus. Just because, you know, the silence, I wouldn't say, I had to say this, but they're basically better than the kind of majority that we used to. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I'm actually excited about this one because yeah. what happens is how, okay, in most African countries, people get around by two wheelers, border borders, yes. or yeah. machine guns. This yeah. one's uh, 13 seater close to 40 wheelers. Yeah. So the size that you see where now some people see people bringing Manhattan's of this size, most of the big ones like Bantam Bros or Bantam Bros. Uh, which means people get to now experience electric mobility on a daily basis. That will probably raise awareness because if everybody, be it your nephew, your niece, or your grandmother, is going to work or to school in an electric by yeah. uh, at least people get used to them. Right. And then when they now want to make a decision of getting their own electric vehicle, they will have some sort of experience. Yeah. And I like the point you said about that. People like to see an experience and then make a decision. Yeah. So I think. We've been hearing about e-mobility in Kenya now 
uh, maybe cars are getting stronger, stronger. We started with the um, motorbikes for the past five, six years now. Yes. And now, over the past two years or so, uh, some stronger chats around four wheelers. Yes. So I'm thinking in the next, since about a year ago, there's other companies bringing four wheelers now. Yes. And I think maybe in a year or so after people have seen and taken notice, I think we will get more like a, a, a snowball effect. It will, it will gain traction. Okay, we're here talking about fixing EV. But that's not all the EV. Because the Ecotermic does more than fixing EV. Okay, just so that's in closing, what else do you do besides fixing EV? So, Ecoter Mobility is basically a one stop shop for everything EV. If mm-hmm. you're looking for your next EV, we are able to advise which EVs would be better suited for the market based on the budget that you have, which market you can go for. So, our core business is actually leasing electric vehicles to corporates. Mm-hmm. However, we've opened up ability to sell these cars. Uh, a lease to own model, renting these cars, leasing these cars, and servicing these cars. So, in essence, the moment you walk into this, uh, into our shop or office, you should be able to get pricing. And the other thing we've also tried to do is, if you want to get an electric vehicle tomorrow, we are able to do a comparison over a certain amount of time, depending on what your rating is right now. So, an example is if you use a Prado today and you're looking to convert to an EV, which EV would you get that would be an equivalent to a Prado? and how much would you save over a certain amount of period and how much would you actually spend to buy those vehicles. So one stop shop for anything you do. Great, you've heard from the man himself, Alex Mando. Check them out, check their website, check their socials, check them busy. And yeah, thank you for having us and thank you for watching us. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let's spread the awareness of EVs. EVs are here today. They are not the future, they are now. <laughs>